Hello, my YouTube friends. My favorite effect has always been dynamic masks in OBS. They can look something like this, but there are really simple, cool ones like this easy to do. Unfortunately, all of this disappeared behind a paywall not that long ago, but it's finally back. And today I'm going to show you how to create both types of dynamic masks and everything I show you today is totally 100% free. So you know what? We got a lot to get to, so let's get to it! Now everything I'm going to talk about today is totally free and there are links in the description so you can download it, check it out for yourself and follow along. That is the best way to learn. Let me show you this plugin and how to install it. The first thing I want to do is install the plugin and someone has been nice enough to take the free effects stuff or the stream effects stuff and create a free fork for us which has the dynamic masks in it which I've been waiting for forever. So it's awesome. So we're just gonna click go to download and we're gonna go ahead and select the one we want. And we want the Windows installer, which is the only one they have. Makes it easy. So we've got that downloaded. We'll go ahead in here and we're going to go ahead and double click our Windows installer. Then we're going to select more info and run anyways. And we wanna install for all users. Now we get an administrative prompt, which you can't see, but I'm just gonna click yes. And then we're going to accept the agreement and we wanna install this for all users and stream effects for OBS Studio. We'll just click next and then install. And once it's finished, we just click finish. And now all we have to do is go ahead and make sure that if OBS is running, we shut it down and we start it again. Let's make sure the install went okay and test a super simple layer mask. All right, so what I'm gonna do is show you how this works and how you will notice it working. So I created a nested scene. I'm gonna go ahead and click the plus. Now to do this, you're either gonna wanna have a capture card that allows you to do multiple instances, or you could have something like snap camera, or you can use the source clone. In my case, I have a camera that's gonna allow me to do it. So I have video capture device. I'm gonna create a second one, and I'm gonna use the exact same camera. So you can see I have the same camera in main and this and this scene right here. If you want to be able to do this using something like snap camera goes a long way, but you can also use the source clone, um, which is a plugin that's totally free and it allows you to go ahead and clone a source and use whatever source you want. So a source and then you just select which one you want to clone. In this case, it would be main and there we go. So now I have you know, multiple cameras of the same type. I don't have to do that because my capture card allows me to use the same source multiple times. So what I'm gonna do is go into this video capture device right here. I'm gonna right click on it. And because I have an Nvidia card, that is going to allow me to remove the background. Maybe you have another way that you remove background or even a green screen. E any one of those methods will work just fine for this. We're gonna go into filters. We're gonna click the plus and we're gonna go to our NVIDIA background removal. We're gonna click OK, and there we go. So now we have our background removed. So what I wanna do here is I'm gonna go ahead and create a third scene, and we're just gonna call it scene two, that's fine. And in this scene, what I'm gonna do is click the plus. I'm gonna load up a media source right here, and it doesn't really matter what it is. Go ahead and load up an interesting video. We're gonna loop it, click OK, what I'm going to do is right click on this media source and I'm going to go into filters and we're going to select a dynamic mask. And then I'm going to select the other source, our background removal source right here. Uh, so boom. So we've got our background removal source right here. We're going to go all the way down to the bottom under alpha channel. We want to adjust our base down to zero and we want to adjust our alpha up to one or above one, but one will work. So there we go. So when we click OK, you can see that it just removes everything and that background video is right there. Now I'm not sure I'm a big fan of that background video. So let's go into our properties and we'll select another video here. Let's try this one, this one right here. There we go. I like that. So 
now we have us outlined in the background using the mask. So what can we do with this? Well, we could do some really cool effects. I'm going to go ahead and click the plus. We're just going to add another quick scene. And I'm going to add the scene with our background removed right there. And then I'm going to go ahead and add the scene that we just created, which would be scene two. And boom. And we're going to move that below here. And what we can do is just embiggen it a little bit like that. So we have kind of like a halo effect behind us if we want, or we could put it off to the side, whatever we want. And now when we move, you can see that we've got like a cool halo effect behind us. We can click the plus, we can go to media source, and we can add another background if we want. And let's just see what else we've got. We'll add this background right here, and we're gonna click loop, and okay. And there we go. So now we've got us on a cool background with a little halo effect and all that sort of stuff. And you know, we could take this even a step farther. All we have to do is right click on here and we can go into filters. And we can click the plus and we can actually add a render delay in here, right here. Let's add 300 milliseconds of render delay and we'll click close and there we go. So now you can see that when I move, my background will move at a slower pace. Pretty cool stuff. Let me show you how to create really cool ones that you could put in any scene. Now I want to show you how to create and animate your own dynamic masks. Now I'm going to show you how to create your dynamic mask and we're going to start in Pixlr. It's a free photo editor or image editor. It's really simple to use and it actually has a bunch of templates. So we're just gonna go to this Pixlr editor right here and we're gonna create new. And we're gonna go over here and we're going to go to this wide 1080p. We do not want a background. So we're gonna go ahead and have that unchecked and we'll just call this mask one and click create. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go over here to our shapes and we're gonna select that and we can select custom shape and we can just drop this down and select the shape we want. And something like that will probably work pretty good. I'm gonna go ahead and swap our colors here so that black is what we get. And we want the fill to be black. And I'm just gonna create our shape. If I hold down the shift key, it will make sure that our shape is perfectly asymmetrical. And there we go. We'll fit it in here the best way we can. Try to center it up and there we go that looks pretty good so all I have to do now is go up to file and then I'm gonna go to export and we're gonna export as a PNG let's just call it mask for fun and we're gonna click save and there we go so now we have our mask saved on our computer so now we just need to add the movement to our mask and we're gonna do it in a very simple way we're gonna use DaVinci Resolve it's totally free there's a link in the description down below so you can download it, check it out. We're gonna go ahead to new project and we're gonna type animate mask and we're gonna create a new one. Now for this project, because we're gonna be using a still image, it's really important for you to go into file and project settings and make sure that these are what you want. So we want HD 1920 by 1080, perfect. And we wanna go here with our frames per second and we want to set it to 30 frames per second. Then we've got HD 30. We're good to go. Everything looks set up properly. So we're going to go ahead and save that. Then we're going to go into edit. And what I'm going to do is go ahead and drag our mask in there. So let's go to our downloads. Go ahead and grab the mask. Pull it over here. Set it in there. And then I'm going to drag it down here into our composition. And there we go. We have our mask. But it's really hard to see so I'm gonna drag this up and I'm gonna go over here and I'm gonna use some effects now if your effects aren't showing up you just go up here you click the effects button it'll show up down here and we're gonna go to generators and I'm gonna go to solid color and I'm just gonna drag this below our mask and then I'm gonna go ahead and select it and when we select it over here we can come and change our color so we're just gonna select super green screen type color and there we go so now we have our mask 
and our green screen behind it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just stretch this out and let's see how long do I want our clip to be. You can see our clip timing is right here and I think I want it to be somewhere around 25 seconds. Now how long you want your clip to be is going to depend on how fast your thing is going to actually spin. So I think right around 25 seconds is going to be a good spin rate for this but I'll show you how to modify it or adjust it if you like. And then what I'm going to do is go back to the beginning of our composition. So our playhead is right there. And I'm going to go up here and I want to just use this rotation angle to see what we get. And you can see that our rotation wasn't actually centered. So let's put let's set this at zero and this could happen to you if yours isn't centered you can see I have a little bit touching down here and on the top so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and adjust our position up just a little bit so that it's centered in between the top and the bottom so about four and then I'm gonna take my anchor point because if we rotate it now you're gonna see it oscillates up and down we don't want to do that so what I'm going to do is go ahead and take our anchor point and we're going to go minus four to adjust for this. And now when we spin it, you can see it spins exactly as you would expect it to spin. So we're going to bring our rotation angle all the way over here to the left, minus 360. I'm going to go ahead and click this little dot right here. And then I'm going to move my playhead all the way to the end of the composition. And I'm going to click the dot again after I move our rotation all the way down to the other end. And there we go, you don't even have to click the dot, it automatically creates another point. And now when we move this, you can see that we are rotating. And you wanna check and just click play to see how fast you want it rotating. If that's too slow, you can speed it up by clicking this right here. And then this right here is the dot that represents the end of our animation. So we could just move this dot over here and then when we play it you'll see that it rotates a lot faster. And then we can just go ahead and shorten up our composition if that's how fast we want it to go. Obviously if we wanted it to spin slower we could extend our composition out and move this all the way out. But I like how it spins there. I think it spins pretty good. We just don't want any dead space at the end. We want it to stop at the end of the comp composition. So just make sure that that dot is located at the end of the composition so that it will be one fluid motion when you put it in a loop. And there we go. So now we have what we're looking for. All we need to do is deliver this. So we're going to go up to deliver and we're going to call this mask and it spins counter. So we're going to call it counter. And I'm going to go ahead and make sure that we've got 1080, 30 frames per second. And just decide on the location where we want to save it to. And then all we have to do is go ahead and add it to the render queue. And I want to do one more thing. But let's go ahead and just render that out first. Now we just want it to spin the other way. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and click edit. We're going to go back to the beginning of our timeline. And what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to uncheck this dot here and I'm going to go to the end here and you can see it stays in place because it automatically removed that other dot. So we're going to go back to the very beginning and instead of our rotation angle being on this end, we're going to bring it all the way to this end and we're going to click our dot. So make sure it's red. Then we're going to go all the way down to the other end and we're going to go back this way. And just make sure your dot turns red. And now when we click play, we got it spinning the other way. Perfect. So now all we have to do is go in and deliver the other direction. So we're going to go and call this mass clock and we want to go ahead and just make sure 30 frames per second, add to the render queue, make sure it's selected render it out. And now when we go into the location where we saved it, we're going to have two masks. We've got mask clock and mask counter. We want to optimize these for OBS because right now they are definitely not optimized for OBS. They're big files, all that kind of stuff. If I go up here to view and details, it should be pretty small, but we can make them smaller. So we're going to open up shutter encoder, 
The link for this is in the description down below so you can check it out yourself. It is totally free. And what we're gonna do is choose a function and we're gonna go with VP9. And then we're going to just drag these two in here. And we don't need to do any other goofy settings or anything like that because there's no alpha in these. So all we have to do is click start function and it will go ahead and make these tinier and more optimized for our live stream setting. So there we go, you can see that it makes them quite smaller, less than half the size of the other files. And boom, we're all set and ready to go. So now we have our masks created, all we have to do is set these up in OBS. We're gonna create a lot of nested scenes with this, so just uh, follow along with me. It's pretty simple. All I did here was load a camera into our first scene. I'm gonna go ahead and right click on this scene and I'm going to just call this one main. And there we go. And I'm gonna click the plus and I'm gonna add a second scene and I'm gonna call this one mask. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and just load that camera right back into here, but I'm gonna do it by using the scene. So we're gonna load the main camera right there Boom. So we have that in there. I'm also going to go ahead and load our two other masks. So we're gonna to go to media source and we'll just call this mask clock and click okay. Now I'm just gonna to browse to our mask. In this case, we want our mask clock, but we wanna get the VP9 one, the small nifty one, and we wanna loop it and click okay. So there we go. We've got our clockwise mask and I'm just gonna drag it down here and let's go ahead and set up our camera to use it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and right click on filters under our main and I'm gonna click the plus and I'm gonna go to our dynamic mask. And I'll click okay. And we wanna load that source. In this case, we're gonna use mask clock as our source. And we're gonna scroll on down here to the bottom and all we need to do is go ahead and remove the green. So we're gonna go minus one on the green right here. And if we click close, wow, there you go. You can see that we have our mask rotating. Very cool. So now what I'm gonna do is go ahead and click the plus and I'm going to add another media source. In this case, we're gonna call this mask counter and click okay. And then I'm gonna go ahead and browse and we're gonna load our counterclockwise mask right here. And we're gonna loop it and we're gonna click okay. And we're just gonna move our counterclockwise mask down. And now we can load anything from an image to a video or whatever we want to work with the other mask. So I'm gonna click the plus and I'm gonna go to our media source and I'm just gonna call this one BG1 for a background one and click OK. And I'm just gonna find a background that's gonna work for us. One of our VP9 backgrounds. And we're gonna loop it and click OK. And there we go. So that's what our background looks like. And we can just move our background down below our main scene. And there we go, that's what we would have if that's what we want. But what we're gonna do is go ahead and right click on that. And we're gonna go to filters and I'm gonna click the plus and we're gonna to go to dynamic mask. And for this dynamic mask, we're going to select the counterclockwise source. And then all we have to do is go down here and we can subtract out our green input value under alpha channel. So we just select green, we go minus one, and there we go, and click close. And now we can see that that little background is going around the other background. So we've got some kind of cool stuff going on. What we can do now is we could theoretically put another background in there, but I don't want to do that. I usually use something like this within a scene that I'm doing a tutorial on. So let's go ahead and click the plus and we'll get our tutorial scene. And what I'm going to do is go ahead and load up a display capture so we're capturing our display and I just have to select the display that we want to capture in this case I believe this is the one we'll go ahead and just embiggen it 
And then what I'm going to do is go ahead and click the plus and I'm going to load a scene and I'm going to load our masks scene. When we load that in there, you can see, first of all, it's too big. And secondly, it is, uh, you know, got the green screen in the back. So we're going to right click on our mask scene. We're going to go to filters. We're going to click the plus. We're going to go to our chroma key and we'll click OK. You can see that the background is totally disappeared. So we're going to go ahead and shrink that down. And there we go. Now we probably didn't select the perfect background because that background had a lot of green in it. And really, if you think about it, you don't want all that much green. So we can fix that problem by going over here and we can go to our background one and click on properties and we can select a different background. And there we go. So now we have kind of a really cool effect going on. If we go over to our tutorial screen, you can see. And of course, this is just one type of background. We can actually modify it even more if we go over here to masks and we can take our first mask, our main one, shrink it down just a little bit and we wanna make sure that we center it up as best we can and then you can see that adds a pretty cool effect. So when we go back over here in tutorial, now it really looks pretty cool. So there are a lot of different effects that we can do with this, but now that it's in here as one source, we can move it around wherever we want. We don't have to worry about it. And the best part is now we could create another scene that's just our main talking head scene. Since we already called the other one main, we're doing this wrong, but that's okay. Uh, main TH, click OK. We can bring in our main talking head scene and we don't have any masks or anything on this scene. So we go to the tutorial scene, we are masked up. In our main scene, we are not. I just love the dynamic mask. There is just so many cool things that you can do with it. And I only just scratched the surface. Now that you know how to create them, I can't wait to see what you do with this effect. If you want to see some other dynamic masks that I created videos on, you should check this out. And if you're always looking for tools, tips, and tricks to help make you a better live streamer or YouTuber, subscribe to the channel. My name is Michael Fire Jr. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day, and I'll see you in the next one.